Okay, we're gonna make chili. Uh, everything you need to make it. Uh, let's see here, some nice vegetables, a lot of, I like peppers. These are whole peeled tomatoes, they're not real San Marzano, we'll get to that later. Uh, these are kidney beans, uh, great northerns and pintos. I accidentally got reduced salt, but it doesn't matter because we can add our own salt. And a pound of ground beef, some hot sauce. Uh, most important to have is uh, chili powder and cumin for spices. Got some good salt. We got a big pot um, and a cutting board with our onion. And now the helper is going to film me demonstrating how to correctly cut up an onion. Uh, this is how you do it when you've worked in kitchens in New York for a while, probably any other kitchen anywhere else. Don't need that for anything. Uh, it's got two sides. You cut one off. Which one? Turns out you cut this one off so that the onion will still hold together when you're doing the rest of the dispatching. Want to cut it in half right down the middle through the part that holds it together. Um, a lot of people like to cut through this way, but it's not really necessary. And a uh, superior chef once told me that that was a waste of time. Uh, beyond that, you turn it this way. When you cut anything, you'll notice if you don't already do this, that people that really know how to cut, they hold with the hand sideways and the knife this way. They don't do it like this, and they certainly don't do it like that block with their knuckles. That way they can chop and never hurt themselves. So we want pretty big chunky onions to go in the chili. We cut it that way, we turn it this way. Once again, uh, perpendicular hand position. Same thing to our other one. And this time we'll uh, not do this part of the process and see if it makes any difference. Fairly certain that it won't. And that is the correct way to cut an onion for your chili. Next part of cooking chili is we're going to turn on the oven for reasons that will become clear later. Bake. We're gonna put it up pretty high. So how about 425? <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna turn on the stovetop. And the reason we're turning on the stovetop is for one of the most important things about making chili nobody seems to know. You take the cap off of that, please. Thanks a lot. What's the first step to making chili? Uh, besides cutting up your onion, because you're not going to want things to burn, is you get some olive oil heated up, and then you throw your spices in, and you cook the spices. Because the spices are no different than any anything else that you cook. Uh, imagine them before they were dust form. They were in seed form. And if you roast seeds, they taste like they're roasted. They become more flavorful because uh, sugars come out of things and caramelize. doesn't matter if it's bread or vegetables or seeds or seeds that have been turned into dust uh, into spice. So if you cook the spice first, the spice will become more flavorful. And once our spice is cooking, we won't want it to burn. So at that point, we'll throw in some onions, mix it up with the spice, and we'll have the base for our chili. Meanwhile, we're going to do something else that's also going to make it more flavorful. Yeah, look in here. So there's all the spices. Uh, we know they got a pretty good amount of olive oil in there. We know that they're pretty much uh, as cooked as we want them. We just want to heat them up a little bit so we can see smoke coming out and we can smell the spices. Uh, by the way, I also threw in uh, some cayenne pepper and uh, put it in the middle. Cayenne and pepper and turmeric also went in there. Turmeric's supposed to be good for your brain. Cayenne pepper goes in everything that would otherwise have black pepper. This is going to get black pepper too. Wham! That's the sound you want to hear. Now we uh, stir up our onions with our spices. Keeping our spices from getting burnt. We don't want burnt flavored spices. We 
just want to augment the flavor a little bit. That looks nice. Now what we're doing is sweating the onions. It just means boy, cooking them in olive oil long enough for them to turn soft. Meantime, I'll show you how I uh, like to uh, dispatch a green, red, orange, or yellow pepper. All right, uh, camera, camera woman, woman. Uh, get this right in the middle. This is the easiest way that I've found to do it. Cut off the top so you can see in there like so. Separate these little parts right here. So there's a word for that that I used to know. And usually when you do that, you can just pluck that right out of there. Beyond that, I've seen some people roll it around. It looks fancy, but I don't think it works that great. I just cut a little chunk out in the middle. Cut them next to the white parts, so you can take the white part off if you want. And beyond that, let's say you want to cut it into chunks. Same thing as last time. Instead of using chopping motion, you just drag the knife back. Same thing, perpendicular on your knuckles so you can't get hurt. We'll be throwing those in there pretty soon. Uh, anything else while we're here? Um, no. Next time I'll show you what happens uh, to all of the peppers. Uh, you get a good uh, bird's eye view of these peppers if you want. Go ahead, lift it up. Um, so it's got some green peppers, uh, yellow peppers, I can't remember what these are called. Like three jalapenos, some serranos are in there, and some garlic cloves. So what I like to do, is throw them all on a sheet tray. And roast everything together. Because it's the same thing as the, um, same thing as the spices. What we're doing is build, building flavor. Uh, when we roast the peppers with the garlic, we could have put some onion in there too, wouldn't have hurt. But uh, got plenty of onion in there, it should be okay. Let's see, here's some nice pepper. That was some olive oil I just threw on there. We're gonna roast these until they start to turn uh, a little black on the edges by producing more flavor and after that happens we'll pull them out put them on this um, cutting board chop them up real fine and throw them right in the chili uh, one of the last things we're going to do is once the um, the whole chili is assembled in the bowl uh, we're going to put it in the whole chili back in the oven put the top rack on here so it gets some direct heat on there uh, the whole chili bowl with everything in it will finally go in the oven at the end and we'll be uh, baking the chili um, until uh, the carrots that are in it turn soft. Because I don't know, I like... What? That pot doesn't go in the, in the oven. We haven't put this pot in the oven before? It doesn't go in the oven. Okay, well we'll just do it on top of the yeah. stove top, we'll be fine. Uh, but anything, anyway, everything will go in there together. Uh, there'll be some carrots in there. We'll cook those until they're soft and our chili will be done. All right, so what's going on in here is I threw the ground beef and the carrots in on top of our onion and spice mixture. That'll start cooking away. Probably could have thrown those carrots in a little bit earlier, but they'll be soft by the time it's done. Here you go, come around this way where there'll be some light on the situation. I like to use whole peeled tomatoes because that way, if you buy crushed, you can't really see what you're getting. This way, if you get a gross tomato, you can just get rid of it. So what I like to do is get most of the juice out so uh, you don't explode them onto your, sh your shirt. I'm going to chop all these up like such, like so, and when I'm done, throw them right in here. Here you go. Throw them right in here once my beef is done. Throw the beans in there as well. I'll uh, wash the beans a little bit just by pouring the goop off the top and pour a little water in there. And put them upside down a few times, that's the extent that I clean them to. We'll pull this out, chop it up, throw that in there, cook the whole thing together, taste it, 
add spices as needed. Throw in this critical, <coughs> throw this critical tomato paste to make it uh, nice and thick, not soupy. We'll be looking at some chili. We're live. All right, so first we'll sharpen things up. Later, uh, whatever we make next, will feature my, my real chef knives and a actual sharpener, sharpen, a honing blade, I think is what it's called. So here's our uh, peppers that were roasted. Uh, some of them are um, just carbon, otherwise known as flavor. <laughs> so we'll just chop these up real good. Just a little bit of floating pan technique. The question is, do we want to put in this many peppers? I think what we'll do is we'll sample some of this pepper medley, mix it all up, give it a taste, see what the heat level is like, and make the call from there. I predict they're all going in. It's a pretty big thing of chili. Uh, I might want. I guess it's worth mentioning that I decided not to put all four cans of beans in there. It seemed like three was enough. Not always putting four, but maybe not. It looks good with three. jalapenos. Alright. There's no way my mother can endure that level of heat, even though to me it's delicious. So we're gonna go, we we'll start with half. Um, one, get the uh, chili in there. Go ahead and get a good bird's eye view on the chili. Oh yeah, also worth mentioning I guess a lot of people probably don't like carrots in their chili, but I just love carrots when they're soft with beet juice. I mean beet juice. When they're soft with um with uh, beef juice. Beef juice and carrots are like two great. Let's see if we can get some light on that. Go ahead and get that in there. Uh, yeah, for some reason beef juice and carrots to me are just two great tastes. Tastes great together. All right, the chili supremo with the peppers, roasted, fresh jalapenos, and the ghost pepper sauce. 